Welcome back to LA Fish Guys, Aquarium Tech Talk, DC Pump episode. Left you hanging the last part. Uh, we ran into a minor speed bump. One of the uh, pumps had a crack in the volume. Don't know if you can see that there. Uh, we also dropped it and broke a little piece out of there, but I believe it was probably shipping damage. Fortunately for me, the manufacturer does give good support, and uh, I'm also the director of customer support for Royal Exclusive USA. So, uh, got a new volume, and uh, we'll discuss the final install. Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk DC Pump Edition. As I indicated, had a minor speed bump with the broken volute. Uh, unfortunately, it was a minor issue. Um, it only resulted in a delay or two of installing one of the pumps. But since I'm an impatient guy, I ran ahead and got the stuff installed before Jim can get over here with a camera. So now we'll discuss the install of the DC pumps or the final install. And we'll also get into some of the merits of DC pumps and why people are using DC pumps and moreover why they've become so popular. So. Let's uh, take a look down below the tank. So, you see I've got the two pumps installed. Um, this is my closed loop pump and it feeds through my Aqua UV 114 watt ultraviolet sterilizer. Um, the other RD3230 DC pump is running my return pump. Um, one of the benefits I've seen has been a power savings. I was using two super dark bowls before. Um, one of those pumps, or uh, each of those pumps was drawing about 174 watts according to my kilowatt meter. Um, the return pump, the way it's set right now, giving me the exact same flow, is running at 150 watts. That's about a 27 watt savings there just on the return pump. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how does he know the flow is the same? And for me, it's real easy. I can tell just simply by the water line where the water line is in here. If I increase the flow, the water level goes up in the tank. If I decrease it, it drops down. And I can look at the line here with the uh, out my drywall there and tell where it was at. So I was able to get the same flow at about 150 watts. Um, on closed loop, what I've done is that's actually being controlled by my Apex controller. And I've gotten a little bit creative with my programming so that at night, it drops down to 50 watts. My flow really slows down. Um, during the day, um, it runs a couple different cycles. Um, normally, it'll spin at about 120 watts, which is right around um, right around 2,700 gallons an hour um, at 120 watts. Then I have a flush cycle and what happens is several times a day I use Tunzi pumps in here and several times a day they kick into a flush cycle where one side of the tank the Tunzi pumps will spin up to full power while the other side shuts off um, and then it'll oscillate. In fact right now it is in one of those flush cycles and uh, this side of the tank is blasting whereas the other side of the tank is off, and it'll switch sides, and what that does is it kicks up detritus in my tank. Well, the closed loop pump returns underneath the live rocks. You can't see it in there, but there's a PVC manifold that I built that goes around the perimeter of the overflow on the outside, and every inch or two, there's a quarter inch hole drilled in this manifold. The water goes up through the bottom of the tank, through the center of the overflow, and out through some bulkheads where it meets up with this PVC pipe um, or manifold. And when the flush cycle kicks in on the Tunzies, the, the uh, RD3 that I'm using for my closed loop also kicks up to high speed. Right now it's running at 178 watts, which is uh, right around 4,000 gallons an hour of water blasting out from underneath the rocks. And what that does is kicks out any detritus. And if you look in here, it's kind of hard to tell, um, but you can see that there's actually rocks moving from underneath the uh, rocks. You can see, if you look carefully down there, Jim, there's that little spot there, you can see that rocks are blasting out underneath the rocks there. And so what that student is kicking out any detritus, and that happens all the way around the perimeter of the overflow and keeps stuff from settling down there. At the same time, like I said, my Tunzies go into this mode and they blast any detritus up, which ends up getting suspended in the water column and goes over the overflow. So for me, that's one of the benefits of using this pump is I go into power saving mode at night and I can have different flow profiles during the day to augment the existing flow in the tank and do so all while saving power. Um, you know, the net power savings 
it, you know, it's probably on average about 100 watts over the course of a 24 hour period. So it's a, a fairly decent savings when you figure that the other pump that I replaced, um, the closed loop with, ran at 174 watts all day long. The other advantage is these pumps are dead silent. You cannot hear them. In fact, when I first plugged them in, I had to look at my flow to see if they were actually working because you wouldn't know. It. You know, they make no noise, they make no heat. Um, you know, and, and we'll discuss more about some of those values. Um, and that's one of the key reasons why people go to these DC pumps. But, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I, I have the controllability. Um, I have the manual control too, where I can adjust through these control boxes that I have mounted on the wall. If I so choose, if I want to increase the power, I can push up or push down. Um, these particular controllers also have feed modes in them. If you want to use a feed mode where you hit feed and it'll go down or slow down to a set speed. I don't really use feed modes with my pumps. They run what they run and, you know, regardless of whether I'm feeding or not. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, I've been very, very pleased. It has been uh, a few months since we installed them and uh, you know, it's, it's been uh, a good change for me. Um, you know, they're quieter, they run cooler, um, and they're uh, more efficient. And for me, efficiency is key because once upon a time, several years back, uh, that is, if you've been following LA Fish Guys, you may recall we did a major sump overhaul uh, where I changed out a lot of pumps and other equipment, um, followed by a light change. Way back then, my electric bills were running $1,100 a month, and I've now got them down to $350 a month, and that's all because of changes I've done to my tank over the last handful of years. And for me, that's a huge, huge, huge savings. It was costly up front, but it was an investment that paid for itself in the first year. So I welcome change. You know, I'm also a technology junkie, so you know, having been in this hobby 20 years, I like to see new equipment. Um, if I'm working with different companies, you know, I certainly like to be a user as well. Um, it allows me to make um, suggestions based on experience. So having some hands-on experience with these pumps is a great opportunity for me to, you know, obviously be familiar with them and, you know, know their ups and downs. And, and uh, so from that aspect, I'm very pleased. Um, the choice was a good choice. Um, and the install was easy enough, short of the minor little hiccup. Uh, but in a nutshell, you know, that's, that's the install there, the underside. Um, and of course, a little bit of how I'm using them. Um, so in the next part, we'll talk about the merits of DC pumps and why people are going to. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF, to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available and the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be that's myfishtank.com are you ready to update your aquarium lighting to leds but are confused with the gimmicks the colors gadgets and programming let ReefBright help you with straightforward LED lighting strips similar to your old tube lighting. ReefBright's XHO and Tech LED light strips are long narrow units packed with a row of one or three watt LED bulbs. Three color choices, a 10K white, 
a 50-50 mix, and a blue actinic. ReefBrite's LED light strips easily mount to the inside of your canopy or use the three or five unit mounting brackets to attractively suspend multiple strips over the top of your tank. ReefBrite also offers metal halides and metal halide LED combinations. You can find us on the internet at selected dealers and local fish shops or visit us at reefbrite.com. All right, so we've talked about my use of the uh, DC pumps, and now we're going to really kind of touch on why DC pumps are becoming so popular um, and you know how people are using them and what their benefits are. Um, uh, one of the reasons why they're becoming popular um, is cost. There's a lot of cheap DC pumps out there, and... Um, they have their merits and they also have their pitfalls and you know as long as you're prepared and keep a spare pump or are prepared to deal with the failure um, you know the cheap pumps even have their benefits as well um, key benefits to the DC pumps you know first and foremost is noise people have these things in their living rooms or in their bedrooms or places where they appreciate um, quiet and these magnetic drive larger pumps be it the Iwakis uh, mag drives which are really popular, Little Giants or some of these other pumps, they tend to generate a fair amount of noise and um, when you compare to a DC pump, uh, you know, as I said before, the DC pumps are for the most part pretty damn silent um, and for people that are really conscious about noise, that's a factor. For me, noise has never really been much of a factor because I've got my tank well insulated, uh, I don't hear it on the side that I usually spend my time on. Um, and I have more noise from my overflows, but for people that are really conscious about noise and trying to build the silent system, a DC pump is going to be one of the quietest pumps they can get their hands on. Uh, the other benefit is, is heat transfer. Um, you deal with a lot of these other type of magnetic drive pumps, be it bag drives that people use internally, um, Milwaukee's, Little Giants, even the reflow type of pumps, you know, there's a fair amount of heat transfer with them. Some obviously transfer less heat than others, but a DC pump on the other hand um, has for the most part very, very little heat transfer you know, per watt compared to some of the bigger um, pumps like the ones I mentioned. Um, and it's not just about the heat transfer directly from the pump, but what that does is it raises the temperature in the tank and that necessitates people to go out and invest in expensive chillers. Well, chillers are great devices to have, but they are costly, number one, and they also consume a lot of power. Uh, that's one of the areas that I was very conscious over the years is trying to reduce my heat footprint on my tank. Uh, my chiller was a half horsepower chiller. I still have it plumbed in. I don't use it. But it draws anywhere from 11 you know, to 12 amps and it was running 12 hours a day once upon a time. And that adds up. You know, you start looking at your power usage and it's not just about what your fish tank uses, but you know, when you look at your house as a whole or your electric company starts charging you based on different tiers, your watt consumption translates into cost exponentially. As you use more wattage, the cost goes up exponentially because of different tiers. And in my case, I was in a very high tier. So getting rid of the dependency on things like chillers was a huge um, value for me. And I know a lot of people that I talk to really you know, hate the fact that they've got to use chillers. Well, DC pumps are one way you know, to get away from that. Um, there's less heat transfer there. Um, then, of course, as I mentioned, power consumption. Um, watt, you know, compared to gallon per hour, um, when you compare different pumps, DC pumps can move more water um, for less power consumption. Now, of course, there is a trade-off there. DC pumps typically um, are not great for head pressure. And, you know, when you look at your head pressure, for example, it's not just about, you know, I'm pumping up six feet high. That's not total head pressure. Head pressure also has to factor in things like friction loss, your elbows, the type of PVC that you're using, and the diameter of the PVC you're using. So just because you're pumping up six foot high doesn't mean you have a six foot head. Um, your head can be seven, eight, ten, twelve feet depending on how far the plumbing's routed and the type of plumbing you're using. So you have to look carefully at your head pressure when you plan out your pump, whether it's a DC pump or any other pump, but it's more important with DC pumps because as I said, they don't deal with head pressure very well. You know, they're more 
designed for flow and for lower head levels. So if you are looking at DC pumps, I do encourage you to you know, do your homework, use the uh, head loss calculators that are widely available. Um, Reef Central has one, there's some other ones online, and calculate your head loss properly. Uh, so you have a real good idea of what you're using. And if you're going to plumb one of these in, you know, it's always a good, good idea to use larger diameter plumbing because that can reduce friction loss and that ultimately leads to lower head, head pressure. So um, you know, be cognizant of that if you're looking at DC pumps because as I said, there's only a couple DC pumps out there um, that deal with head pressure very well. Um, the uh, Royal Exclusive pumps are one. Um, the Abyss pumps are another one that deal with head, um, head pressure and they're very expensive pumps so be aware of that. Um, let's see, other benefits to DC pump is controllability. A number of these pumps allow um, some very unique control. Um, obviously Apex control is one of the features that a lot of people are looking for or you know other controllers that support 0 to 10 volt control. For me uh, that was a prerequisite with any pumps or equipment that I use is the ability to control it with my Apex because my flow, my lighting, and all that stuff is planned around, um, you know, being thrifty with my power usage and, you know, using the power that I have at hand when I need it and slowing it down at night when I don't need it. Um, so that's, you know, one of the benefits there. Another uh, interesting thing, and, and uh, I'll bring it up, is the uh, Ecotech Vectra pumps. They've kind of done some very unique things with their pumps in that they have a controller. Um, they're not supporting any kind of third-party controllers like Apex, but their built-in controller will actually compensate for varying head level or head pressure. So, you know, if for some reason your plumbing gets a little bit clogged up or whatever, the pump will spin up even higher and deal with that. Uh, if it senses a power supply failure, it'll alert you through Ecotech Live or whatever it is. Um, so there's some unique features coming out in DC pumps these days that really are kind of setting a precedence for what's possible with pumps. Um, they're not just your typical plug it in the wall and away it goes kind of pump. They're actually becoming intelligent and in, in letting you know things that you wouldn't normally be aware of. Um, so, you know, there's those benefits as well, you know, they're kind of, if you will, smart. Um, you know, beyond that, of course, the noise factor, I mentioned that. We have the heat transfer that's, a, you know, minimal um, with the DC pump, and in large part that's because the power supplies are outside of the pump. Uh, people will say, well, you know, 100 watts in is going to be 100 watts out, and that's not entirely true with the DC pump. Um, because the power is converted into power supply and a lot of the heat is dissipated in the power supply or controller, that heat is not necessarily transferred into the pump. Um, and uh, let's see, we have the heat, we have the quiet, we have the intelligence, uh, the control factors, and uh, last but not least is the form factor. Um, DC pumps, when you compare flow um, and stuff like that, like for example the pumps that I have here, if you notice in the beginning, you know, the pumps that I was replacing you know, were those reflows, and those reflows were literally three times the size as these you know, smaller DC pumps that have comparable or even greater flow. Um, so they take up less space. From an external pump, that's not necessarily as important because those of us that use external pumps generally have enough space. Uh, but if you're thinking you know, about an internal pump, um, you know, gallon for the footprint, you get a fair amount of flow from a DC pump in a very small footprint. So, you know, there is that advantage there when you're comparing to certain internal pumps. But on the internal side, it's really not as big of a difference as it would be if you're looking at an external pump. Um, bottom line, there's a lot of upsides to DC pumps. But if you are looking for a DC pump, make sure you do your homework. Find your plumbing, research your vendors, make sure if you're not going to buy quality, and that's out there, that at least you plan on having a spare and more importantly make sure that whoever you're buying from is there to support you in case there is an issue. So hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned and thanks for watching LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk.